is an investigation too of cell cycle and cancer. One of the hallmarks of cancer is the unregulated or uncontrolled division of cells. In the first part of the experiment, we're making a model of the cell cycle. In this model, the marble that we just inserted represents a cell. Once we have it taped into place, we'll mark off this ring into four sections representing the four steps in the cell cycle. That is the G1 phase, the S phase, the G2 phase, and the M phase, or the mitosis phase. We're using a Sharpie to draw directly on the plastic tubing. And again, this will be marked off into quarters. After we go through the phases of the cell cycle, we'll focus more on mitosis itself and the steps in mitosis, and then come back and look at some of the proteins that regulate passage of a cell through the cell cycle. Okay, so we have it marked in quarters, and now Phillips is labeling the quarters. This is G1, and then he's making an arrow to indicate the direction that the cell will move through the cycle. The next phase is the S phase, again with an arrow. You'll see that the arrows are all pointing in the same direction, of course, and in this case we're making them all point clockwise. Okay, and then the last phase is the M phase, or the mitotic phase. So this will give students a hands-on experience of how the cell moves through the cell cycle from G1 to S to G2 and then to M. We'll come back later to add the proteins that actually regulate or control the passage of a cell through this cycle. But first, we're going to take a look at the steps of mitosis itself, or the M phase of the cell cycle. We're going to look at a prepared slide of onion root tip. Onion root tip is a really good tissue for studying mitosis because it's so actively growing that mitosis and cell division is occurring at a really elevated rate in this particular area of the tissue. So we're often able to find all the steps to mitosis in one preparation. So we're moving up to 40x for magnification total of 400 at this point. We're actually going to go to oil immersion, or 1000x in this case, but in order to do that, we have to add a drop of immersion oil. So we add one drop directly to this slide, like so, and then we'll turn the 100x, or oil immersion lens, into place, and you can see it actually touches the oil. Now we can take a look. Here's a cell in prophase. You can see that the chromosomes are condensed, invisible, but not highly organized yet. In order to find other stages of mitosis, we simply translocate on the same slide. And here's metaphase. You can see that the chromosomes are starting to line up on the central plane of the cell, getting ready to divide. Let's so move around a little bit more, and we find anaphase. So anaphase here, you see that the groups of chromosomes are being pulled apart to the opposite ends of the cell. Anaphase is usually fairly easy to see. Telophase, on the other hand, is more difficult. It tends to look like an elongated nucleus representing the reformation of the nuclear membrane. Okay, so all this will be recorded in the student data record. And this gives us a better view of the various steps of mitosis. Now let's return back to the cell cycle once we put the slide away. Keep in mind that all the steps of mitosis that we just saw, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase, are all components of the M phase of the cell cycle. We use lens paper to clean the oil immersion lens. Okay, so we turn back to our cell cycle model, and now at each junction between cell cycle phases, we're inserting push pins. And these push pins actually represent in this model the proteins that regulate the passage of a cell from one phase of the cell cycle to another. These pins can be a little bit difficult to push in. 
it's probably a good idea to make the holes first with the push pins. Actually, once the experiment is over, these pins can be removed. You can wipe off the magic marker and use the tube again next year, in which case it's much easier to put together. We really can't overstate the importance of the proteins to control the passage of the cell from one phase to the next of the cell cycle, particularly when we're talking about cancer. Because one of the mechanisms by which cancer is thought to work is by mutations that occur in these proteins that control the cell cycle. And obviously what we'll see here is that as we remove particular proteins, that a cell will pass from one phase to the next, represented by the model just moving from one phase to the next. So just imagine the control that these proteins do exert on how cells go through the cycle and the impact of a mutation that would prevent their function. Cells can then divide in an uncontrolled manner and tumors can form and we'll discuss this more in the next investigation.